Welcome to the Interrogation True Crime Stories Podcast. All the stories told on this show are either fabricated, alleged, or didn't happen at all, and shouldn't be used in the court of law. We hope. here with us is mo alexander everybody how are you mo i am good my friend how are you like i said works work this week's been kind of crazy but you know the deal like um the way comedy kind of works especially somebody in my position is you know I'm, i don't have the luxury at this point of being able to go full-time so i still have to have a full-time job uh, right so so yeah it's just busy you know it's really hard to keep track of everything and feel like i feel like i'm getting behind on shit all the time um and plus, while really? you were here, while you were here in Denver, I was on tour in New Mexico, so that was great. But again, it's just like being out of town, not having a lot of <laughs> time to do other things to be productive. But um, you were just out here. Congratulations yeah. on headlining Comedy Works, my man. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, while I was there in September, they booked me for the uh, downtown club that I got rebooked and went to the South Club this time, and all shows were fun. That's great. They, like. They like to throw me with some of the. They throw me with people who should probably be headlining that room uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Other headliners in front of me all day. I'm like, oh, y'all trying to make me work. Let's go. Let's do this. Make me a better comic. Let's go. I feel like you get. I mean, you're treated like royalty out here. I mean, I've only been out here for like four years, and I feel like you come through a couple times a year. And I assume that's partially because a) there's lots of good work for you, and b) I mean, it is a strong comedy scene. So I feel like no matter what show you're on, it's basically going to be a good one. Oh my God, Denver comedy is fighting with Chicago to be the best comedy scene in America. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, just back Between- and forth. Between comedy, it's, it's not it's not back and forth. It's just there's so much comedy in each of those two towns that you can get on any show, any night, any time. And I mean, I spent a month in. I, I like to spend a month in July to get out of Memphis heat and go do Colorado mm-hmm. and do every little thing. And I'll be back towards the end of July to work out new stuff. So you know, when I go back to the comedy works again, I have a new hour. Yeah, what was I mean? What are your, the differences to you in terms of Chicago and Denver? In terms of being like, what would what would you say gives one the leg up over the other? Y'all are friendlier. <laughs> That's good, which is surprising because I feel like you know people think of the Midwest. It's all the charm, you know. It's all of the it's all the being very polite, very nice. I can, I can tell you what the difference is. It's the difference in the it's the difference in your cold weather. Mm-hmm. If you guys are still nice in cold weather. Chicago, they want you dead. They want you like, ah, oh, I'm outside, it's cold, it's like 30 degrees outside. All those streets are old and you run down some kind of, just walking down a block. In Denver, it's just like, wow, they planned for this. They know how to clean up a, I mean, Chicago could clean up a city. I mean, well, kind of, with snow, that's all I'm going to say. But it's just, Denver, Denver the, to me personally, Denver's a better, better comedy scene. Yeah, it's really, it's so tight. It's so tight back and forth between the two, but Denver just destroys, and I'm just like Jesus Christ, y'all rock. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's no sense in being like, well, we're number one or we're number or they're number one or whatever. That's yeah. cool to hear. It's cool to hear that um, you're not the only person that said that. Obviously, that Denver is a great comedy scene and arguably like the best in the country. But I think it's cool that we are talking about you know two cities that have notoriously always been what people would consider like B tier or A one. You know, because it yeah. was just it was just New York and L A for forever. But I think yeah. it actually suits people like yourself even more to have places like Denver and Chicago where um, you can actually go and do a lot of shows and get paid and yeah. walk away from the trip feeling like you got something out of it as opposed no, to New York exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's so many good clubs in De- in the Colorado area that you can drive, you know, uh, I can go do Comedy Works and then the following week I can go do Fort Collins and following week after that and go down to Colorado Springs, follow that and go down to Albuquerque, not in the state, but it's close enough to go do a right. fun show. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Now, oh, God. how was this? So, was this the first time you'd headline Comedy Works? The first time I headlined Comedy Works South. I did okay, headline. Yeah, yeah. I headlined. Okay. I headlined. Uh, last July, I was there uh, doing my you know yearly pilgrimage to Colorado and did the New Talent Night. And one of the managers at 
the downtown club came up to me after the show like who the hell are you why don't i know your name <laughs> i'm like hi <laughs> yeah, which is a little surprising because i mean you've been at, i mean god just to, like you've been at it for so long like how many years in are you at this point i don't even want to talk about it don't ask <laughs> <laughs> longer than i've been fucking alive <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much, Corey. Shut up. <laughs> uh, hey, it shows, man. I was going to say, you're polished and you're, you're a sure thing every single time you go on stage. I think and, and anytime somebody books you on a show, they, it's guaranteed that you're going to kill and do, do very well. So I, I mean that thank in you, the sir. highest compliment I can possibly give. Um, and I thank you, sir. I just, yeah. I, I just try to be funny every time I walk on stage. Yeah, and you're pretty funny off stage too. That helps. You're a banter king. You like talking no. shit. You're good at, <laughs> you're good at banter. <laughs> I'm from Memphis, dude. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you grow? Did you grow up in Memphis or like yes, where? Yes, sir. Born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, this is where I get all my attitude from, right here. Yeah, and would you say that? I mean, yeah, very characteristic of the city itself and kind of the environment that you grew up in. Um. Yeah, I had to. Uh, I learned a long time ago to be funny. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't like I was trying to make the kids laugh. I learned at an early age, make the teachers laugh and I don't get in trouble. It's, I think if people, kids either go two ways, it's either you're a fighter or you're, or you're a comic basically, yeah. even from a, even if you're not technically a comic, I was kind of always the same way. I never really liked to fight. I never wanted to fight, but I just figured out how to make people laugh and hopefully that could keep people off my back. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But I always I struggled a lot with like authority figures when I was a kid, and I did not like being talked down to. So sometimes I got the right. best of me. Like you can't just roast your teacher in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of class. See, and not... see, that's the thing in Memphis. We did that. We'd roast teachers to their faces, and they roast you right back. <laughs> so you had to have some kind of skill to be like you just can't cut. You just can't say something stupid because they mm -hmm. will roast your ass and then give you a detention slip. Yeah, and you didn't get the. Yeah, seriously, seriously, <laughs> we would roast, we would roast teachers all the time back in my in my school, all the time. And they were just cool with it. They were cool with it. Well, some of them were cool with it. Yeah, of course. They had to know the cool teachers, but there were some that'd be like, "Oh, you want to talk some shit? Let's go!" And then they just roast you for like five minutes straight, and it's just like, <laughs> "Ooh." I'm just gonna shut up and put my head down because that hurt. That really hurt. Uh, oh yeah. Did you get did you get into a lot of trouble when you were in school or are you a pretty well behaved kid? I was never a behaved kid. I just never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> just good at covering up. Yeah, they were, I was very good at covering up. They never suspected me. That's the thing. They never suspected me. He was like, Oh, he's the chubby, smart, fat kid. We're not he's not gonna do anything and I'm the mastermind of everything in the background. Yeah, you're just playing chess with all the other kids yeah. that are yeah. <laughs> that are like exactly. just Go them into doing it, or at least cover exactly. up your cover your tracks. Exactly. Hey, don't you think it'd be good to go get that cinnamon roll off that plate over there? <laughs> <laughs> Just all suited to your interests. Exactly. <laughs> so, before we get uh, dive too deep into your story and um, you know what you wanted to share today, like what what what's on, what's next for you, Mo? I mean, how long have you? I feel like you've been. So have you been touring almost just as long as you've been doing comedy? Like, are you working on a special? Are you working on an album? Like a new hour um, just to tour with? I, I'm I'm working on a new I'm working on a new hour of comedy right now. I'm bored with my old old stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but it's so hard because some of my new stuff, some of the new stuff is just so, just it, not. It's, it's politics politics and just slapping the shit out of stupid people with the actuality of life again mm -hmm. uh but next up i think we're gonna re-record my other cd call i had a cd um eight years ago in the hospital and dad twice and um had an album out called got clots and i think we're gonna re-record that for stand-up records in the next couple months uh just because the day i recorded that album was like Almost a year to the day that I dropped dead. What? No, I'm being dead serious. I'm crazy. I, I, yeah, I'm no crazy. pun intended. I but so I don't know if I heard. I haven't heard this story. So if you wouldn't mind you elaborating on that a little bit, no, please. I, I eight years ago I dropped dead. Eight years ago I had I had screwed up one leg. Went to the hospital to see what's wrong with it. They didn't help me very much and ended up breaking my other ankle, other foot walking back into my house. Mm -hmm. So I was immobile for a little bit, ended up having 18 blood clots. Uh, yeah, yeah. Damn, eight, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not an exaggeration. 18 I mean, blood clots. I mean, what's a bad number? Is one a bad number? <laughs> one's a bad number. <laughs> one's, one's not a bad good. Number. <laughs> one's a horrible number. 18 <laughs> is like, hey, 
hey, you're trying to do P. Diddy kind of stuff right now. You're overbooking it. They're like, we won't stop. We won't stop. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I, this is all true. It's all on an album called Got Clocked. Uh, I went in. They they told me you were you're really sick. We're gonna take care of it. And then they say uh, they have this stuff we're gonna put in your body because it can t- break up the clots. And they're like, no, we're not gonna do that. You don't need that. You're too healthy. Then I dropped dead. And uh, <laughs> I seriously, Damn, people bro. think it's a joke. I dropped dead April fifth, two thousand fifteen, which was Easter Sunday. I was dead for two minutes, and they brought me back. And I still consider myself a much more efficient savior. I mean, so, I was gonna uh, say, dude, that yeah. if, if, there's, if there's ever a message <laughs> yeah. in a life event, none of this three day waiting, three day waiting bullshit. I came right back. I was like, ha-ha! <laughs> still more uh, efficient. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, then they put this medicine in me, and the doctor was like, two days later, he's like, hey, let me put this little thing on you, make sure it's something weird with your blood. Like, and hear the phrase you never want to hear a doctor say, oh shit, I nicked an artery. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's like, a, you know like, I'm awake, right? You know I'm awake. I heard you say that. I'm awake. I'm awake right now. Yeah. Oh shit's never yeah. it, followed by anything. Forget what it is. You'd be like, oh yeah. no. And like, what do you mean? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You gotta, <laughs> what do you mean? You're imagine, like, it's gonna be okay. Gonna imagine if you're if you're but, under if you're under all the stuff that they must say, like all the bullshit. They're like, oh fuck, that wasn't how that was supposed to go. But this is when you're still awake. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still, I'm still awake. I'm still alive. I mean, I'm just sitting there. He's just rubbing that like this little thing. This like little. I, don't, I think they call it a Doppler on my thigh. Like, oh shit, I nicked an artery. And I'm like, what? What? I'm awake. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Well, man, I'm glad you're upright. Obviously, yeah, that was a while too. ago, but yeah, I was going to say the world's a better place with you in it, for sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my leg is still messed up. I still, that's how come you see me walking around weird all the time, because my leg is, is never healed properly from seven surgeries and them screwing some stuff up and all this other weird stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. I mean, I've said, yeah, I've been, I've been there firsthand when we've had to figure out a successful way to kind of get you on stage because of the leg. Yeah. Remember when we were down yeah. in Austin and we did that game show that I, that I was hosting at the Creek in the Cave? And like Ian Abrams oh, was on God, there too. Yes. <laughs> what I a mess! What a mess that show was. That was the first time I think I told you, but that was the first time I ever did it. So logis- I didn't have the logistics like all figured out. You know what I mean? This was all like a theoretical game. And for yeah. anybody, just so everybody's aware, it was this game. It was this show called House Party, and it was mm-hmm. like two, two competing teams of comics, and they were. It was a mix of like stand up and like house party games. Um, for and the, I mean, it would it wound up working out, but holy shit! Like so, first of all, we had you, Ian Aber, and Big Timmy, like all on the stage together, which was right. like in and of itself like a lot to work with, right? Yeah. And yep. then, do you remember when we were doing the Dizzy Bat portion? And Ian almost fell off of the stage. Yes, yes I do remember that. I'm like, I, I'm like, so I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. No, but. I hadn't thought about it. I was just like, well, I'm like, man, we have a great lineup. We have awesome comics on this show. And then I, I forgot how hard it was to do things like Dizzy Bat, like when you're yeah. in peak drinking shape and you're not doing yes, anything. Yeah, we are else. all drinking and you're playing been around the bat. I'm like, no, this is going to end badly. <laughs> it did. And it almost did. I mean, we got out of there alive and the show by all accounts was like successful, you know, like yeah. there's people there and they had a yeah, good people, time. People came, people had fun. <laughs> it was very weird. But I never did that shit again, bro. I was <laughs> I was like, this is Thank done. Thank you for making me part of your experiment. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, well, I knew you'd be good for it. Fuck, man. Yeah. All right, well, before we dive into your story, I've got a couple dumb crimes that I found on the internet that we can goof on okay. a little bit whenever you're, if you're good. Okay. Oh, sweet. All right, so first one, school bus driver fired after purposely slamming on the brakes with students on board and facing charges. Any first thoughts? Wait, he got fired for slamming on a brake? Yeah, for slamming on purpose. So apparently, like, he was trying to teach these kids a lesson and in the process wound up with 29 counts of child abuse with no injuries and one count of child abuse with bodily injuries. Okay, first of all, that's not his fault. I agree. That should have been a school board for not putting a, a, a seat belts on that bus. Right. How are, the, 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 how the are there no- or, I mean, granted, like, okay, they might have even had them, but none of these kids, nobody's yeah. playing it safe? No, screw that. No, that's not his fault. They were doing something horrible. They were doing something horrible to him. He was like, almost, don't make me stop this bus. And he stopped the bus, and, like, one kid flew up to him. 
I can just imagine. No, he, needs to, he needs to fight that one. He needs to fight that one. I'm just imagining some kid hitting the windshield and everybody else is just <laughs> bouncing <laughs> off the roof. <laughs> because if they're all in their seats, then they're just going to run into the seat in front of them. You know what I mean? Right. They're going to go like flying. And I don't remember. Right. We used to have like, I'm sure they're the same, but the school bus seats we had was like that weird kind of plastic covering that wasn't oh, yeah. like, a, it's not a fabric or anything. <laughs> no, no. It, it's that weird plastic that would, that's why some that school in the summertime, uh, like May, June in Memphis, May, Memphis, those buses would actually melt to your butt. And oh, God. To, yeah. Uh, uh-uh, no. And you'd sit on one of the seatbelts accidentally or put your hand on it and it would just scorch oh, just, and give you third just, degree burns. Oh, uh, just walk around with a GM symbol on your hand for three hours, just <laughs> burnt here like a brand. Yeah. Because here's the thing. I, I I give this I try to I'm trying to give this person a lot of credit just because I know how personally I was such a piece of shit when I was a kid. And a and an adult that's really only they're kind of doing this part time, you know, and yeah. they have to wake up early and then they don't do anything else until the rest of the end of the day. And they're just dealing with all these unruly children. I was a pain. I was jumping. I was climbing over seats. I was talking. La- I was just notorious for being a really loud person, even when I was a very young age and I would get in trouble on every school bus. And I remember my mom even said at one point. She's like, you know, Corey, at first I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, and I figured all these bus drivers were just mean people. But then I realized there was one common denominator here, and it was you. You. (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah, but I mean, just you got to think, you got to figure, like, these people are at their wits' end. Like, I I can, managing 30 kids these days, kids terrify me these days. More than any. They're horrible. More and more no. than any adult, I find children to be terrifying. I agree with that. I'm not gonna lie about that. The, I mean, I rather you know have adults bother me than at least I know if I uh, if I'm being bothered by an adult, I can just punch them in the throat. Mm-hmm. I can't do that to a kid because then they're like, "Oh, it's child abuse." Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I can potentially outwit an adult if I try to like. If I if I get in too deep conversationally with a kid, you know, because I'm trying to teach him a lesson or something, like they could just do something crazy that's unpredictable yeah. with zero yeah. consequences. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Ugh. Yeah. Kids. I feel like do you <laughs> So apparently the driver this happened in Colorado, by the way. Driver sixty one year old. <laughs> of course it would be. Yeah. Brian Fitzgerald can be heard in the video telling Castle Rock Elementary students, which by the way is like the religious area of town. So it just goes to show you just because your kids are religious doesn't mean they're well behaved. Um They're the worst ones. I know, right? Because they just all they can they can just repent. And also they t- I think they tend to be like the types of parents that their kids couldn't ever have done anything wrong. Of course. Of course. It was like, my child could not have done that. He's going uh, shut up. Yeah. So apparently all these kids were climbing all over seats. And as the bus was coming to a stop, Fitzgerald just yells over the bus's microphone. Do you guys want to see how dangerous that it is? And slammed on the brakes. I love this guy. He should be made the entire, he should be the chief of the entire bus line. I agree. <laughs> I was going to say, at least he knows how to put his foot down, right? For real. Teach What's these his guys name a again? lesson. Uh, let me see. Name? His name is Brian Fitzgerald. Brian Fitzgerald, the next time I'm playing the Comedy Works in Denver, come out. I will get you a seat <laughs> right up front. Just give him a megaphone, too, just in case people start <laughs> acting out of line. <laughs> Don't make me turn this comedy club around. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Next article. Uh, Republicans are worried legalizing weed will put police dogs out of work. Any first thoughts? What? Yeah. We're legalizing weed. Hey, I think they can uh, sniff other drug paraphernalia other than weed. Cocaine is still a thing. It's it is. True. Yeah. Cocaine I will tell you. Is- one, thing, one thing is that they definitely can't smell LSD. I've brought that through an airport many times. <laughs> they're, they're bad yeah, at that. But- Look, if if you can't tra- if you can't untrain a dog to smell weed, what about fentanyl? Do we have fentanyl dogs? Are they? Is that a thing? <laughs> that should be the higher priority. It is like, ooh, we gotta stop weed. Yeah, because that's such a dangerous drug that twenty eight states has it legal now. Go kiss my ass. Then I'm gonna tell you that right now. That pisses me off. Let we the dogs. What about the dogs? What about people who legally have drugs now? Shut up. Yeah. You- you know, teach your dog to sniff a fentanyl and leave us alone. Let me have my weed. 
I think leave the dogs alone in general, because like, why are you forcing dogs to be cops anyway? You know, exactly. Like <laughs> dogs don't want to be cops unless they're German shepherds. German shepherds are only telltale dogs on the planet. They're the only dogs. He's like, hey, I want to chill. German shepherds are like, Zeke, how? I want to go and just be mean to people. Argh. Yeah, I, hate those I, I haven't met a lot of dogs that look like they want to get into law enforcement. Maybe some that are no. just fr- free roaming around and they're a little nosy. They seem like they have an eye or a nose for it. But otherwise, yeah. I, most dogs just want to like live the life of a casual dog. Sleep most of the day, go for some walks. I don't know that many dogs are just like, you know what? I could really, I could really serve a purpose in the criminal justice system. I'm with you on that. I don't understand. Leave dogs alone. We have enough technology. Go, go buy yourself like something that can actually sniff out uh, uh, the the. Mon- molecule that makes fit no leave the dogs alone okay let them rest and play and be cool yeah i mean why i don't know why we gotta bring animals into this there's two types of animals that are cops there's dogs and horses i don't know what they leave them out of it you know like (laughs) yeah there should not be any horse cops anymore okay (laughs) it's 2023 we have we have we have one of those things called the the little rascal scooters just scoot Mm -hmm. around there you know, just uh, they shouldn't have horses. Leave them alone. They need to be just horses. It's just a flex. We were they had them down in Albuquerque last weekend. There was just six Clydesdales like running around town, just it is a as a show of force. And I'm like, man, how they're embarrassing! They're using Clyde. They're using Clydesdale as police horses in Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah, man, those things oh, were huge. Yes. They, oh, remi- they reminded me of the like the um the what is it uh, the Central Park cops in in Elf. <laughs> they were massive, bro. Okay. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. It's a little much. Could you imagine how embarrassing it would be to get pulled over by a horse? Like <laughs> but also I think it would be great if it wasn't there wasn't even an officer attached to it. There was just the that horse. Would be funny. <laughs> Listen. The only people the only people you should be allowed to pull over if you own a horse are the Amish. That's it. <laughs> If I have wheels and you have legs, you should not be legally able to pull me over. Yeah, I concur with that. I also, yeah, I mean, because you are driving a car that has multiple, if not hundreds of horsepower, right? This should be the easiest getaway on the planet. You're dealing with something that has literally one horsepower. Horsepower, one horsepower. That's it. (laughs) That's it. You should be able to pull over a buggy and that's it. Nothing. If you have wheels and an engine with more than two horsepower, you immediately get a pass. Just leave us alone. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Same with the bike cops. Same with the bike cops. They can't. They can't do anything either. Just like a little bicycle cop. No. No. Yeah, you're allowed to pull over bikes and unicycles. That's your jurisdiction. That's it. That's it. And electric, <laughs> electric unicycles. That's it. Electric unicycle. That's all they're allowed to pull over. Oh man, they're really making it wild west down in Albuquerque. If you did, have, I mean, that would be fun to see if there was like an actual like horse v horse police chase. Like old school, <laughs> old school, you know, like the Wild West, the way it used to be. That should be a Breaking Bad episode. Ah, uh, they really missed an opportunity with that. They did. They really did. <laughs> All right, man. That's going to do it for our dumb crimes of the week. Um, so I always preface uh, stories with, you know, um, nothing. I'm hoping nothing that anybody talks about on here can be used in the court of law. Uh, so everything here is embellished or dramatized for the sake of the story, just for fun. Um, so what did you bring us today, Mo? I know you've lived a very interesting life. By the way, is your possum within arm's reach right now, or is it in a different room? No, uh, he is in his. He's in his little cage asleep right now. I think. Okay, taking a nap. Just so everybody is aware, could you please give the details on one of the most wonderful pets I've I've seen? <laughs> Uh, Pancho the Possum walked into my house a few, uh, two years ago. It's almost his two year anniversary on the 4th, May 4th, May 4th, 2021. Uh, my partner Chandra saw a little possum just hanging out and she was like, there's a small possum here. And then I saw him I'm like, oh, he's cute. And he was too tiny to be just, you know, grab and throw back outside. Cause uh-huh. if you ever see a little baby possum without a mom. Uh, the mom is gone. He and he's too small, so we weren't just gonna throw him outside. Mm-hmm. So we uh we we caught him using this stuff called Poncho's Cheese Dip, which is a local cheese <laughs> dip in Memphis. Uh, cause she found out that he had eaten an entire thing just sitting there by himself, and then we put some in the cage. Next day, we have Poncho, and he's kind of a special needs possum. Also, mm-hmm. he's got a little neurological thing going well with his with his head, so he's not releasable. Okay. Well, so, he's just yours forever. He well, yeah. They only they only live about two years in um, 
in the wild, but they can go up to four or five in captivity. So we're hoping this little dude sticks around as long as possible because he's awesome. Hell yeah, man. He's my, he's my little buddy, and uh, he's everywhere. He's actually on the cover of my album, Mo Possum Blues. <laughs> yeah, because you bring him around. I mean, you usually bring him on the road with you, right? I've seen him a yeah, couple he times tour- here. He, yeah. he, he, he tours with me. There's a, there's a, there's, I mean, I, I, only time we have to, we can't take him when I go out of the country. And I have a friend who possum sits him. And last year she called him like, he's using tools. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He just, you don't understand how smart these little dudes are. He uh, pushed a chair in front of the door and got on the chair and then tried to turn a doorknob. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you, what's, what's wrong, dude? And he's like, I need to get out of here. I mean, if he spends enough time inside, he's going to learn how to use all the, all the different things you have in there. He knows how to use my phone, which really bothers me. Does he have his own? Does he have his own IG account yet? His own TikTok? He, he does. He does have an IG account. It's Poncho and Blanca. Poncho <laughs> underscore Blanca. Yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has his own Instagram. If you follow my Instagram, which is Mo Alexander, he's right there. You can find him right in there too. Hell <laughs> yeah, dude. Just as a side note, my uh, this was before I was born. I wish I could have experienced it, but my mom actually had two pet raccoons before uh, when it was just her and my dad, and actually they were living with my grandparents. Their names were Tinkus and Tyner. We've talked about them on the show before, but apparently they were just nightmares. They really like they loved my mom, but that, other than that, they were just terrors to have in the house. Yeah. Here's the problem with raccoons. They're all they're smarter than monkeys almost. They're almost mm-hmm. they're smarter than dogs, almost as smart as monkeys, that's what it is. And they get bored and just do whatever they want because yeah. they have hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're mischievous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. They're awesome little dudes. In fact, I was at the I was at a uh, casino in Tunica, Mississippi doing a show. And one of the management people were going to watch out for raccoons. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they have video of raccoons using coins to open up little screws. <laughs> in the Dude, they were like, look, we're not playing. They're, they're like, drop out of the ceiling, get food, and then run away. I'm like, what are you telling me? Yeah. So it's I'm, not Planet of the Apes you have to worry about. It's Planet of the Raccoons. Yeah, well, as long as we're not made of trash, I think we're fine. It's just that they'll do anything they can to get into some garbage. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, they will. They, they're crazy. Oh yeah, man! Every time Poncho goes for trash, they're like, "Don't be a stereotype." And- <laughs> it's like you're playing into prejudice. Knock it off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, man. So, what story did you have for us today? Um, is it is this one? Can I tell the story where I got robbed? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I would love to hear it. Oh my God! So, uh, let's confess things. I got robbed, Chandra and I got robbed at the worst possible time, but also the best possible time. I had just got done, finished, I just got finished doing a podcast at like one o'clock in the morning. So we're leaving this dude's house Mm -hmm. and we are high as fuck. Just high. Just like two weeks in Denver with no air, just, just gone. Yeah. Just brain functions aren't working. Yeah, seriously. And we're walking outside, and I see this guy. I see this person walking up the driveway. The guy lives in a duplex, so I'm thinking this guy's got another house. Turns out to be this 14 year old kid dressed in dressed in Run DMC track suits from like 1982. Dude, to- I walking- told you, I don't, I do not trust teenagers. I do not this trust kids. <laughs> Neither do I. Neither do I. They're either yeah, super we- shy. They're either super shy and they don't have any social skills whatsoever, or they're going to smack the shit out of you for a TikTok. Like it's either one or the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This little dude comes walking up to me with a gun that's bigger than his hand. Fuck. And he just sticks it in my face like, "Give me your shit, nigga." And I am so high. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you, I'm I'm telling this story as it happened, and also it's on the CD because this, I don't make it up. He puts his gun to my face, and Shandra's like a couple steps behind me and screams, and I look at him like, "Hey, man, does your daddy know you got his gun out tonight?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, does your mama's man friend know you have his gun out tonight?" Oh man, That's you can the first words out of my mouth when I got into my house. I said to this guy, he's just like, "Give me your shit." And I'm just like, there's a voice in my head that says he has no gun, bullets in that gun. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? I never heard this voice before. I don't know you. <laughs> it's, Is this the weed talking to me? <laughs> what yeah, I was going to say, you just got so high, just accessed like a third level of consciousness that all of a sudden it's starting, so. to, be, starting so. to, to be either your voice of reason or the devil. You can't quite decide. One of the two. 
and he was just out of reach. I mean, seriously, Corey, he was like nine pounds. He <laughs> oh, he was so tiny, and I was so I'm like, I could kill him if he was three inches closer. That's all I mean, <laughs> three inches, because if I look, because it, it says my leg is messed up, I can't do my regular lunge and just go pow pow pump this guy. So I'm just high as hell. He takes the gun and he goes with Chandra and he's like. Take that, give me your purse. And he, she's like, and he didn't even want to go through her purse. She's like, go through your purse and get shit out of the purse for me. And I'm just like, you know, she could have a gun in there and shoot your stupid ass. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he comes back to me, grabs my phone, tries to make me take my little lock off the phone, grabs her watch, tries to make her do that. That's when the cops come. The cops come. My friend heard her scream, call the cops. Cops run up. Run this dude off. Just run this dude off. They start chasing him. Cops start asking me questions. He's like, you okay, sir? You need a ambulance? No, I'm good. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm good. I promise. You get that little skinny bastard? He looks just like Run DMC. He <laughs> grabs him, but pop out. And uh, he, the cop's like, you you sure you're good? I'm good. Let me ask you a couple questions. What you need to know? Are you in a gang? I'm like, did this nigga just ask me if I'm in a gang? I'm the one who just got robbed. He just asked me. I'm like, sir... I am 50 years old. My knees will not allow such things. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am too unhealthy for gang activity. I'm just <laughs> and he just walked away trying not to laugh at me, okay? So they're in the backyard because when he jumped the fence, he dropped everything. He dropped all kinds of stuff. He's like, hey, man, is this your wallet? That's my wallet. Is this still your keys? Those are my keys. Whose purse is this? That's her purse. Is this your three bags of weed? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. It must be weed that he dropped. He's like, look, man, and this is honestly got you. He's put, he said, he's like, hey, man, I, you just had a gun put to your head. We don't give a fuck. You smoke this weed right now in front of us. I'm like, excuse me, officer. I know entrapment when I see it. Yeah, and right? <laughs> <laughs> he's already tried to set you up once. He, tried, he just asked you if you were in a gang. He's like, all right, well, he's pretty smart. So let's see if we can get him to rip a blunt in front of us. Did that? They did that. I'm just like, oh, oh you ain't, you have one black dude tonight. You ain't getting two. <laughs> I also love that, and this speaks to you, your character at large. Uh, like I'd prefaced earlier, you're great at talking shit, even with a gun pointed to your head. Dude, I wish I was making this story up because it wasn't until the next day I'm like freaking out because I'm like, do you realize how stupid what I just said to that motherfucker? <laughs> but you were in high. But you were in high mode. You were just like, ah, oh, this ain't a big deal. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna goof with this guy, and make him feel stupid, and surely that's yeah. and, it, and it worked. You didn't, you it didn't, did. yeah, you totally got out of it. It totally. I'm just like, I can't believe this is going on. The coolest part, the dumbest part of the story, I got to tell you this thing. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so they uh, three bags of weed. So they, uh, there's like eight cops. And by the way, if you ever see on the news. Where the, the 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 cops are there and they have all the flashing lights on and stuff. They mm -hmm. only do that for the news. As soon as the news leave, they turn off all the lights. I was like, you bastards. Yeah. And so they're like, took all the stuff and set it on the car in front of my car, like my wallet and all that stuff. And then they're like taking pictures and getting fingerprints. And uh, then they take off. We had to go to the police station. And uh, while we're waiting to leave, Shandra's just like. They left the three bags of weed on the car. We should probably get that back. I'm like, you do what you want, white woman. Let's go right ahead. I'm not doing shit right now. Yeah. There's and a cop just, just like waiting in the bushes to be like, let's see if they take it now. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, right? Because there's a cop car here just waiting. He's doing something there before we can leave. And she does this whole like, oh, I wonder if they're still awake inside. I have to go pee. And she goes between the two cars, grabs the three bags of weed, and doesn't even finish going to the house. He didn't even go towards the house. He's like, nope, they're asleep. I'm like, that is the worst shit you've ever done. That's the worst acting I've ever seen anyone do. And we're back at the police station now, and there's three bags of weed in her bag. And we're getting, we're getting talked to by the cops. Cops come to me and be like, hey, man, I'm really surprised. You don't have a record. I'm like, why are you looking at my police record, you son of a bitch? I didn't do yeah. anything. Yeah. I'm the victim here. Of course I don't. What the world? He's like, well, you're black. That's just our protocol. You know? Like, that's you, just... you, understand, you, you understand how real that is? I don't. One, I of the cops, I was trying to, the, guy, the one of the cops who saved my life, I'm trying to thank him. I'm like, hey, man, look, thank you for doing everything you did. Like, what's your name? He's like, most of them, most people call me Officer Asshole. And I'm just like, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Officer Hole, let me ask you a question. And I just <laughs> said that to him. And he's just like, you right. I deserve that. Yeah, yeah you deserve that. I'm the victim, you motherfucker. I didn't do anything to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I feel like this was very misplaced police work. Or was it just like, well, we needed to do it to somebody, so this is just practice. We might as well just run it on this guy. I guess like, well, you are the average, you're the average large black man that we usually beat up on, but tonight, uh, I guess we have to turn our attitude differently. Yeah, yeah, you, so, yeah, you usually fit like five descriptions a night, so we just figured we'd and, run and you through and see if we could see if we could catch you for something. I was so pissed. He was like, "You don't have a police record." No, what? Why are you looking at my record? Yeah. Also, I was hoping that maybe uh, Poncho would be in the bag, in the purse, so that way when the kid went to go grab it, the, the possum this, just this jumps is, out and is, lurches out. This is a pre. This is PP pre Poncho. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, of all the skills for him to learn, I think having a self defense or a security a security possum would probably be one of the most entertaining, if nothing else. I would skills. agree with that. He he usually just usually he's just hanging out on my shoulder or shattered your shoulder, just looking at it. People like hello, yeah. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah. So did they ever catch? Did they catch the kid? Oh, they caught the guy that night. They caught the dude that night. Well, and here's the story behind him. Him and his friend had caught who had. Uh, carjacked someone like 20 miles away then drove to the area we were tried to rob me and i'm just like uh, why he robbed the neighbor who was sitting on the porch saw us to hit our uh the jeep you know the the door open walked mm -hmm. over tried to rob us then jumped over the fence and take took the car that he carjacked and blew it up on the way and they caught him in the zoo what <laughs> Yeah, so I'm talking to him like, yeah, we got to take him to the hospital. He got bit. I was like, please tell me he into the alligator ring. Tell me he fell into the alligator pond. Please, they're just laughing. They're like, no, just a dog. I'm like, damn it, damn yeah. it. He just tramples his way through every dangerous animal exhibit. Just I was just hoping. <laughs> I was just so hoping when they told him he, he had to, you ran and caught. They caught him in the zoo. I was like, please tell me he fell into the alligator. Please. Who, just, who please. runs into the zoo of all the places? This kid's an idiot. This kid, <laughs> this kid deserves to have the bad shit happen to him. Yeah, yeah. So he was 14. I think they tried him as an adult. He shouldn't be out for a few more years, so I'm okay. No, thankfully, yeah. I think you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> you're safe. All right, dude. Well, dude, thank you so much for joining the show. Um, before we hey, get man, out of thank here... Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, just plug everything you need to uh, uh, now with your social medias, where people can find you, maybe some to upcoming tour dates. Uh, please, if you want to follow me on social media, I need most people to follow me on Instagram. That's Mo Alexander, M O Alexander. Comedy has changed. It's not about how funny you are. It's how many followers do you have that we can potentially market to. So follow me on Instagram, Mo Alexander. My website is moalexander.net. That's where all the tour dates are right there. Uh, this week, I'm playing Auburn, Alabama on Saturday night at a place called Crown of Comedy. Uh, and the 24th through the 28th, I will be in Boise, Idaho, and Meridian, Idaho, and somewhere else, Idaho, doing a bunch of little brewery shows up there, having too much fun with the Blue City Comedy Crew, and my boy, and my boy, uh, uh, Nate Ford. So yeah, that's what we're doing those with. So other than that, uh, just follow me online, Mo Alexander, I'm everywhere. Hell yeah, dude. Um, well, thank you everybody for listening to this show. If you haven't already, like, review, subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and on any of your favorite podcast platforms. Um, appreciate everybody listening. For upcoming tour dates for me, go to CoreyDavid.com. Um, we do have an upcoming interrogation live show in Denver. Uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. I can pull that exact date up really quick. That will be on Saturday, May 13th. Um, so for tickets to that, you can go to my website. Uh, that'll be at Bandit Oak brewing one of the venues that i host here in town um and also thank you everybody that came out to the interrogation live shows in santa fe and albuquerque they were super fun um joshua emerson was co-hosting it with me he killed it and i uh, can't thank you all enough for supporting the show so uh thanks guys see ya